everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jenna Redfield and today I have a very exciting video. I'm gonna be talking all about books. I love reading. Ever since I was a small child, I've been obsessed with reading. And so for the last several years, I've really been sort of figuring out the best way to actually read. You know, we're really not taught how to read for pleasure or for business or for learning. The only time we ever read growing up and were taught how to read was at school. And a lot of the time studying for tests and reading textbooks is not quite the same as reading, say, a nonfiction book for your self, you know, or self-development book or even a fiction book. Uh, you know, figuring out exactly what you're going to read and how to read and how to take notes. That's what we're covering today. So make sure to subscribe for more Notion videos. We're going to be talking a little bit about Notion as well as just the entire process of finding a book reading and taking notes. So I actually did a TikTok on this topic and it did pretty well and people had a lot of questions. So I thought I would make more of a follow-up video to kind of explain my entire reading process. So the first thing that you have to decide is, first of all, how do you read? Uh, there's a couple of different options now, more than there used to be. There's physical books that you own. There's physical books you can get from the library. There's eBooks that you can purchase on sites like Amazon Kindle or Apple Books. And then there's also uh, ebooks that you can get from the library. And then the last category is audiobooks. So there's five, really five different ways that you can read nowadays. So there's a lot of different options. Now, I've really found that I tend to enjoy ebooks and e learning the best because I find that it's easier to highlight, it's easier to just have an iPad with me and be able to read. In fact, I actually read on my new treadmill that I just got. So you, I'm gonna show you guys a clip of me reading. So basically what I like to do is I like to go on my treadmill and read at the same time. It encourages me to be able to hit my 10,000 steps every day. And for me, I actually can actually focus while walking. So that is something that I actually really enjoy doing. I'm not a big audiobook listener. I know a lot of people watching this probably are. I just really like to see the text as well as be able to highlight it. Um, it's just easier for me to remember if I read it, but I know there's obviously people who do audiobooks. It's a little harder to uh, organize your thoughts and notes from an audiobook, but you can definitely do it. So I've chosen to get an iPad instead of a Kindle just because I already had an iPad. I didn't really wanna to have to buy a Kindle. I used to have a Kindle, it broke back in the day, but what I love about the iPad is you can actually highlight different text and actually uh, send it over to uh, an image or copy it over into Notion, which we'll talk about in a second. But before we do, let's talk about how I choose the books that I read. So I read a lot of nonfiction. I read a lot of books. I've already read 11 books this year and it is the beginning of March. So for me, I tend to read a lot and I read them probably at inopportune times. But one of the things that I try to figure out is, well, what book am I reading? I'm the kind of person who will read multiple books at once. Um, I'll start, you know, a book and then maybe I'll start another book and Eventually I'll finish most of them. Sometimes if I get bored halfway through, I don't end up finishing it. Um, and so right now, literally on my Goodreads, I have about 30 books that I'm reading. Um, some of them I'm not actually currently reading anymore. Uh, but that kind of leads me into that next point, which is I actually love the app Goodreads. It's actually owned by Amazon. But what it does is it allows me to, if I hear about a book or if somebody recommends a book or I read about a book in another book, I always go immediately before I forget into Goodreads and just add it to my want to read list. If you, <laughs> I have like three to 4,000 books on that list. Oh my God. So for me, being able to choose the next book really comes down to what I'm struggling with at the moment or something that really piques my interest. So I'm currently reading a book that actually Marie Poulin, who's another Notion expert, talked about yesterday at the Block by Block conference, which is a book about uh, mise en place, I think is how you say it. Um, and I literally just decided to buy it because it wasn't available at my library. And it was $11 on Kindle, and that's what I'm reading right now. Um, I knew it was gonna be a good purchase for me because uh, obviously if Marie recommended it, obviously if Marie recommended it, it was probably a good one. So 
I tend to just kind of go on a whim of what I want to read at the moment, depending on my mood. And some books take a while to finish. Some books are longer than others. Um, it really just depends. And I found that there's not really a specific system. But what I do do is I go into Notion and I have a board. It's actually part of my template. If you go to my ADHD Life Tracker template, I have the brain board, which actually includes my reading list. I like to include it as part of a larger database. And so I have have different books that I read, um, I can track that information. So I'm actually going to jump into Notion and show you guys specifically how I do this. Um, and you guys can see my Notion setup. Okay, so this is kind of a look into my brain template, which is something that's featured in my ADHD and Notion tracker. So right now I have it organized in the so I have here I've got all the different things I've got books, I've got apps, I've got etc. Everything that I track is in the brain. So if I go into the book section, I made one that is a, uh, what's it called? Uh, a board, board view, completely forgot what that was called for a second. Um, and so you can see that on this, I have different categories. So I've got done, current, next, pause, reread. So I have a bunch of different categories. I've also put the uh, image of the book. I just copied the link from Goodreads to the image. I wrote the book's name and then I can also change like the category where it's on. So this one's on Kindle. I also have one called like book I own. I can add it to the different tags as well as send people in my famous people database. I can also write the number of pages and the percentage. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do on here. So I'm going to show you an example for this book. So I haven't, I haven't read this book completely, but one thing that I did was I made a, uh, table of contents. So what I do for every book that I read is I list out all the chapters like this, and then I could add tags if there's almost like chapters, whatever you're doing. This is one I haven't read yet, but this is what I do whenever I get a book. Um, an easy way to find the table of contents to copy is if you go to Barnes and Noble's website, they actually list the table of contents of every book. So what I do is I make a table and what's cool is I actually made a, so if I started a new book or if I were to create a new book, let's just scroll down to here. If I were to create a new book, go here, you will actually see that I have something called book table of contents. If I click on that, that's actually a template that gets me started for whatever the book is. Now, what's cool about this is that within each chapter, I can put book notes, right? I could even make other additional tables if I wanted to. One of the things I usually do is I like to put any big points or quotes that I like from a book within that chapter's information. So I kind of shared already, but I also usually when I'm on Kindle share an image from the book. If it's a quote that I really like, you can also share it as text and put it in here as well on the Kindle. Another way that you can get it if it's on a physical book is take a picture of it and then either Apple Photos or Google Photos will allow you to select text from a photo. So that's pretty cool as well. So there's a lot of easy ways to get quotes and uh, information from the book. And that's really how I take notes. I don't do much beyond this. Uh, I'm not much of a note taker, but this is really how I organize my books. You'll see I have different things in here like, again, like the category, tags, URL, the platform, the year published, etc. Um, I actually have a, uh, this is a formula where the progress bar, um, I, I, I don't remember who I got this from, but basically I think it might've been Red Gregory, but basically it's like a percentage. But what I also like to do is do that on Goodreads. So I'll show you guys over on there as well. But this is really how I organize it on um, on my notion. So I, I literally like to sort it this way. And then I can also create things like filtered databases where you can see just the books that are current, that kind of thing is something you can also do. Okay. So one thing I also wanted to mention is for example, within the book, a hundred million dollar offers, which is a great book, by the way, I want to reread it. Um, one thing that sometimes authors, especially authors that have been writing books for the last 10 years, they actually provide like free downloads or things. So one thing that I like to do um, is either share it here in the brain, the things that I have here. So th for example, these are PDFs or frameworks. So if I click on this, this actually goes to another page within the brain that has the PDF upload that you get from having the book. So you can also link it. So another thing I usually like to do, so if it's called um, 
picking the right market. So then I would go down here and go link to page. So now I also have a direct link over to that. So now that goes straight over to that PDF. I like to do this instead of having the PDF embedded because it just becomes too overwhelming. And I can, if I'm looking for all my PDFs, they're all in the PDF section. So that's really what I like to do when it comes to PDF. So you can also see on Goodreads over here on the left is my current reading. I also have my 2022 reading challenge. So if you go into my books, you can see the books that I'm currently reading. And then one thing that I do is I update either the percentage or the page number that I'm at. So if I go into, let's just give this book an example. So I'm reading The Minimalist Entrepreneur and you can see that I am currently, let's see if it shows, hmm, it doesn't show it on here. It does on the app. Well, so unfortunately it doesn't show you on the website, which is weird, but I'm just gonna show you a screenshot of what it looks like on my iPad where I can actually update my progress. Uh, and it, you literally just add the percentage. I like to do this as I'm reading so that it really helps me know where I am in the book so I don't have to remember the page number.